Flawless plasma weapons may not steal the show as far as the game's energy weapons are concerned, but they definitely leave the mark. The green glow of plasma shot is true beauty. Possibly even more beautiful is the science that makes it all possible. The various plasma weapons you can come across in the Fallout series hide some pretty interesting tech between the trigger and the barrel. The core concept is the namesake of the gun, that being plasma. You may have learned in your early science education of the three states of matter, those being solids, liquids, and gases. Assuming you continued your academic adventure, you are bound to be introduced to the fourth, the aforementioned plasma. It's basically just electric gas, and it's actually the most abundant state of matter in the universe. Now, its abundance in the galaxy doesn't really fully translate to an incredibly large presence on Earth. With the most common interactions most humans will have with plasma is thanks to the sun in the sky, which in effect is just a giant ball of our favorite electric gas. Past that, some TVs and neon signs are obvious examples of plasma in use, but you're not really going to find it implemented into any arms at the local gun range. Plasma weaponry has not really taken off in our reality due to a variety of factors, but there is some hope that we might be getting a little more sci-fi pretty soon. Before we can get started, it's a good idea to take a look at what's stopping us from taking what very well could be the next step forward in munitions. A pretty important component in the deployment of a plasma weapon is the plasma itself. Unfortunately, it's not exactly lying around the earth to be collected. Your best bet would be to have the gun make the plasma on the fly by either heating up a gas high enough or running an electric current across a medium. When you heat up the gas, what you're doing is making all the atoms in the subject speed up and start bumping into each other with progressively more velocity and force. If things get hot enough, the atoms smash into each other with such speed that their electrons get stripped off and it becomes a whole soup of charged particles. You can also just rip the electrons off their atoms with a strong enough electric field. Both of the processes are known as ionization and result in our new favorite state of matter. Either option has its own pros or cons, and I actually think the weapons of Fallout pick and choose on a gun-by-gun -gun basis. Now, a common factor between these two methods of ionization is they require a whole bunch of energy, especially if you want to create enough plasma to sling with any substantial force. The final and biggest hurdle, however, is finding a way to keep the plasma in a somewhat regular form until it hits its target. Plasma acts like a gas in many ways, and gases do not prefer to stay in defined shapes. When given the chance, it'll disperse into the environment, and even if you were able to reach your target, it would have expanded dramatically by the time it gets there, something we don't see represented in the game. Starting off with the plasma generation question, the plasma weapons in the fall universe have been retconned in a minor way, which dramatically shifts how these guns work under the hood. Now I said retcon, and might get a shiver down your spine. But I assure you, not all retcons are bad, and I have a video link below which will go in depth on the nature of retconning. Getting back on track, in Fallout 4 and 76, the main ammunition type for our battery of plasma weapons is the aptly named plasma cartridge. It is depicted as a container holding some form of green substance. This is the same color that the series uses to depict our titular state of matter, so it appears that they have somehow managed to create and store the plasma ahead of time. This is not really possible with any modern technology, but I assume they've figured something out in the half century they have until nuclear annihilation. Now, all this talk I did about plasma generation was not pointless, however, as these cartridges were not always the method used to feed the weapons in question. Prior to plasma cartridges in Falls 1 through to Vegas, the ammunition of choice for plasma rifles and alike was the micro-fusion cell. Fusion in this context most likely refers to nuclear fusion, which is the big brother of nuclear fission. Fission is what is utilized in the nuclear power plants around the world, and fusion was just successfully used to create net energy in a massive lab. And with millions of dollars. But who's to say that in 50 years time, we couldn't have shrunk fusion generators down to pocket-sized and disperse them around the world. Fusion also has some other difficulties, mainly due to the fact that a majority of the energy put off is in the form of heat, which is great when you're trying to make steam and spin a turbine, but not when you're trying to sling plasma downrange. There are theoretical solutions, but that'll have to be a video of its own down the road. For now, we will grant that these little tiny cells are using nuclear fusion to create a whole bunch of electrical energy. Now that we have our energy, 
What method of ionization has the arms dealers of the Fall Universe chose to use? There are two distinct designs for the plasma weaponry of the first four mainline Fall games. There is the rifle and the caster. The rifle uses heat to ionize the air. There's clearly some sort of chamber at the front of the weapon that is used to generate the plasma, and various holes throughout the chassis can either bring in more air or vent out some of the immense heat. The plasma caster from New Vegas uses the same design as the plasma rifle from the 2D games. It consists of a boxy main body and a barrel with three distinct prongs barely touching at the end. It is these prongs that are used to generate the plasma through electric ionization, as a strong current can be used to make an arc between them. The various dials and markers on the side of the weapon appear to be used to dial in some sort of technical aspects of the electrical charge. Now that we have the plasma generator out of the way, we get to the hard stuff. How do we get this plasma into the chest of a raider a dozen meters away? Now, luckily enough, if there's potentially a way to inflict a massive amount of damage, the United States military has already thought about it. Back in 1991, the US Air Force Research Library was busy thinking of cool acronyms for things, at which point they thought of Marauder and decided to do something sciencey with it. Marauder stands for Magnetically Accelerated Ring to Achieve Ultra High Directed Energy in Radiation, it was the Air Force's attempt at what is effectively a plasma gun. It was spurred on by some research done in California known as RACE, or the Ring Accelerator Experiment. There is some amount of my tax dollars that is going to people whose job it is, is just to invent acronyms. The core of this experiment is a shape known as a toroid, which is basically a donut. If you could densely pack a decent bit of plasma into this specific shape and fling it with something, it'll stay compacted together until it reaches its destination. I would also be failing you if I did not mention that throughout the paper describing this experiment, they do just literally call it a plasma gun. So I feel like we're already there, but the expert in arms is about to get involved. So let's see what the military was able to do with it. The answer was a very disappointing, we don't really know. The project didn't end up going anywhere with a 1998 article saying that they were targeting a shot of plasma to reach 3% of the speed of light and hit with the force of about five pounds of TNT by the year 2000. I suspect the problem was that they were just not able to make it energy efficient enough to make sense. It was powered by the Shiva star system, which is frankly massive and not very practical for a relatively mediocre weapon system. Now the Shiva star was recently used for testing nuclear fusion. So maybe if we could create a nuclear fusion reactor small enough to be carried by your average foot soldier, plasma weaponry would make a comeback. We could maybe even call this a micro-fusion cell, for example. Taking a step back, we are both very close and very far away from practical plasma weaponry. It would take just a couple, but a couple very large steps in scientific progress, but the groundwork is there. And if, or when, plasma weapons end up hitting the scene, they may look very familiar. So. Get your practice in now, I guess.